Good morning. I do not own the rights to this music, but guess what? We about to rock it up in here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am so pumped because I know you've been waiting. I know you've been waiting. I know you've been waiting on the promises, but you got to know that God has not forgotten about you. You got to look up to heaven and say, they renew their strength. They shall mount up for me. Good morning, good morning, good morning. They that wait on the Lord. They that wait on the Lord shall not, shall not, shall not lose. They on the Lord. And I'm wait on the Lord. Hold on a little while longer. Here's what you gotta do. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. He'll work it out for you. One thing you must remember. Good morning, y'all. Those that went on the Lord shall not lose nothing. You shall not lose your faith. You shall not be faith. Come on, wait on the Lord and he will come through. On the Lord and he will answer you. Good morning. On the Lord and he won't be long. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, the Lord shall we meet their strength. They shall mount up for wings like an eagle that so Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, y'all. Good morning. It's Sunday, baby. Wait. On the Lord and I say, wait on the Lord. Come on, hold on a little while longer. Here's what you gotta do. Trust and believe, my friend. He'll work it out for you. One thing you must remember. Our God is faithful and he, he cares for you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. They that wait on the Lord. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, y'all, good morning. I'm so excited. Good morning. Are you excited this morning? Have you been waiting on the Lord? Have you been waiting for an answer? Have you been waiting for God to do something in your life? Have you been waiting for a blessing? He won't be long. Come on, keep waiting, keep waiting. Good morning, Tita. Good morning, Nadia. Good morning, Aunt Anisha. Good morning, Shana. Good morning, good morning. Thank you, Shana. Good morning, Mother Love. Good morning, Miss Beverly. Hey! Good morning, Miss Patricia. Happy birthday, Miss Beverly. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, Donna. Hey, Keisha. What's up, friend? Good morning, Lindo. Hey, Lynn. Hey, Miss Monique. Good morning. Come on, y'all. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Hey, I'm Bonnie. Get up, get up, get up, get up, Adina. Get up. Hey, Miss Evelyn. They shall run and not be weary. Hey, Tuna. Good morning, baby. Wait on the Lord and I say, wait on the Lord. Come on, y'all. Wait. You waiting, Peaches. You waiting, Peaches. You waiting, Peaches. Good morning. Happy birthday, Lynette. Good morning, good morning, happy birthday, bro. Hey, Angela, good morning. Won't be long. Y'all know he won't be long, Miss Lisa. You know he won't be long, Miss Patricia. He won't be long. Good morning. Come on, y'all, wave your hand and take a beat. Hold on a little while longer, y'all. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on a little while longer. Hold on. Hold on. Little while longer. Just a little while longer, y'all. Just hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Don't give up. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I want y'all to hold on a little while longer. Here's what we got to do. Trust and believe, my friends. He'll work it out for you. One thing you must remember, our God is faithful and he's there for you. 
Come on, you got to keep holding, y'all. Keep holding. Don't let go. Good morning, Miss Barbara. Good morning, Ashari. Don't let go because God is right there. Come on, in the midst of your waiting, he's going to bless you. That's what the word says. That's what the word says. In the midst of your waiting, he's going to bless you, Desiree. God bless you. I'm so excited, y'all. Because it's Sunday, and I get to teach the word of God, Tiffany. I get to teach the word of God, Miss Sandra. I get to teach the word of God today. So let us pray. Most gracious eternal Father, we bless your holy and righteous name. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to teach your word. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to receive your word. Father, unclog our ears and massage our hearts that we might receive a word today. This word might not be for us. It might be for somebody else. But Father, whatever it is, Father, let us know that you are there. Through the week, God, we love you, we honor you, we thank you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Holy Spirit, have your way today like never before. Loose, heal, deliver, save, and set free. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We love you. We lift up your, our hands today. Father, we glorify you. Father, forgive us for our sins, recognizing that we come short of the glory every single day. So, Father, loose right now. Loose in this place, loose joy, loose love, loose peace, loose financial freedom. God, we thank you, we love you, we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Our heart says amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Well, we are in First Peter chapter 1. We're still there. Are y'all excited about First Peter? Because I've been just so joyful about what Peter is teaching the, um, the Christians. And it's just been blessing my soul. When I was studying all week, I just had so many notes. I had so much that I feel like I'm going to go over today. However, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to hold my peace. I'm going to try to do less as I can. But i just been writing and writing and writing. And it's just been blessing my soul. I hope y'all been learning. I hope y'all been able to share with people. I hope y'all been sharing my live so that somebody else can be blessed through this season. You know, because we think that the holiday season is always a great season for people. But holiday seasons are really tough for some. They're tough because people have lost loved ones and then they, everybody's gathering, everybody's with their loved ones and they're not with their loved ones. You know, people have had hardships, you know, financially. We know a lot of people have been through a lot, you know, within the last couple of years, couple months with the pandemic. So the holidays aren't always that great for people. So I hope you're sharing a lot so people can get encouraged, so they can feel a sense of um, relief that they're not alone. So, you know, when we all, when we get done, you know, if you feel the need, just go ahead and share the lie. Share with your family and friends so that somebody can get a word. Amen. Amen. So we're in first Peter chapter one and we are on verse eight. This is SGS ministry with your girl, Reverend Rashida Lee. For those that never been on here, we study the word line by line, scripture by scripture, and we dive in. So we're diving in today to verse eight, first Peter chapter one, verse eight and verse nine. And um, it says, though you have not seen him, you love him. Now, y'all know I need my glasses. Excuse me. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Now, it says, though you have not seen him, you love him. Now, who am I talking about? Peter is talking to the those that have now been become Christians. And I'm talking to those that are believers now. That's who Peter's talking to. Peter's talking to believers. And it says in here, though you have not seen him, you love him. Now, that was like really, really good to me. And I was like, God, you know, we do love you so much and we have never even seen you. And I realized that it really is a belief factor that we love you so much, but we lay our eyes on our loved ones, our coworkers, our neighbors, our friends, and we have issues and disagreements and falling outs and separations. And we find ourselves hating our loved ones, those that are close to us, those that are tangible, those that we can touch. We're so easy to say, I'm done with you. We're so easy to say, I'm not talking to you no more. Let's just sever this relationship. We good. We've been talking. We've been friends for years. We've been married for a long time. We've been, you know, 
raised up with this family because this is our cousin, this is our aunt, this is our sister, this is our brother. And we are so quick to say, I'm done. But the Bible says, though you have not seen him, you love him. Now, we love God because we have to believe in God because we're told to love God because it's a belief factor. But you have a mother and a father that you were birthed by and you don't even love them. I'm, I'm not going to get hyped right now. It's too early. I'm just, I want to just talk about how can we love an invincible God? One that we've never seen before, but our neighbor, our cousin, our loved one, we cannot love. And we say, I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Oh my God. God is blessing me. I got cocky faith. I'm the one. God loves me. He knows my heart. Oh my God. I'm too blessed to be stressed. All these cliches. We get so excited about God. Oh, I'm, I've been on SGS. I've been praising God. I've been studying the word. I'm an usher. I'm a preacher. I'm a minister of the gospel. I do this in, at church. I'm the armor bearer. We do all this stuff. And the minute somebody make one mistake or the minute somebody do one thing to you, you get so offended, so easily offended, and you don't speak to them no more. You're no longer, you know, want to be bothered. Like, I'm done with that. I don't want to be bothered no more. And I had so many questions about it. It was laying on my heart so heavy because, you know, I found myself this week, a couple people asked me about relationships that I had, and I'm like, whatever. I ain't even going to go there with you. Like, I'm done with it. It is what it is. And even my sister was like, you know, she didn't know, no, 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 no. And I'm like, oh, whatever. But one of the ladies I did her hair yesterday, she challenged me about love. She said, what is love? You know, we have to be the uh, example of love. And I'm like, I am the example of love. And I'm speaking back into work forth with her. But it was so funny when as I, I already knew what I was studying for um, today. But when I went back to the read the scriptures that she told me to read for myself, it really opened my heart to say, how can you say you love God the way you love him? You're so excited about God. You get so pumped up about God. You get so pumped up about SGS. You get so pumped about everything that has to do with church. And when it comes to loving the one that is in, you're in relationship with, you're so easy to say, I'm done. So, as I was reading the word, this scripture really speaks heavily, it stresses heavily on faith in this verse. Because it says, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So if you're receiving the end result of your faith, how is your faith in that situation? With you not caring about your loved one. So I want to go to 1 John chapter 4 verse 7 to 21. I want to read 1 John chapter 4 verse 7 to 21. Because as I was reading, of course y'all know when I'm studying, I'm always getting convicted. I'll be convicted before I even teach y'all. That's why I'll be screaming and hollering. It's all hype and crazy because it'd be like, oh my God, you're talking to Rashida first. But today was very, very um, important to me because... In order for us to receive what God has for us, we have to make sure that we truly love. And God is love. And because of that, we get so easily, we so easily say, I love the Lord, but we don't love the tangible. It says, dear friends, John, 1 John chapter 4, verses 7. It says, dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Now we only live in because of him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. That means he went in the place for our sins. He died on the cross for our sins, right? It goes on to say, verse 11. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Verse 13. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit 
And we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. He ain't worrying about the day. He worrying about judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. In this world, we are like who? We are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. We love because what? We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. Oh my God. We about to start teaching. Whoever claims to love God yet hates his sister or his cousin or his aunt or his uncle or his brother or his, or his, his man, her, her husband or her wife or his wife hates God. They are a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God. Who is teaching today? For whoever does not love their brother and sister, their cousin, their niece, their aunt, their uncle, their husband, their wife, their co-worker, their neighbor, their cousin, their sister, their brother, their aunt, their uncle, their mother, their father, their grandmother, their grandfather cannot love God. Whom they have not seen. Come on, teach to Rashida today. And he has given us this command. This is a command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Somebody say, help me today in this place. You have to love. God is love. How do I love when they hurt me? How do I love when they scandalize me? How do I love when they constantly mistreating me? How do I love when I know they have talked down about me? How do I love? You love because he first loved you. You love because you want him to love you. You forgive because you want him to forgive you. You have to love. Help me today, somebody. The joy in all of this is that you believe in God that's invisible. Believe in your loved one. Believe in the fact that you can trust God that he will make it all right. That he will change the situation. That he will shift some things for you. Come on, help me, Jesus. So, when we take communion, you are showing God that you love him. An invisible God. You're taking bread and wine, a substance to say that I, com that I commemorate with you, God. That I commune with you. That I'm waiting on your promise. You're believing in that. You're waiting on God, but he's invisible. You're taking this bread and wine with belief in your mind that God is going to forgive you for your sins because he died on the cross for you, right? You're believing this. When you pray, you believe that God hears you. When you pray, you believe that God's going to answer you. When you give offering, you believe that God's going to give you a hundredfold back on your offering. You believe that your seed is going to grow in the ground. When you fast, you believe that you have... They have denied your flesh and God's spirit is rising in you and that God is going to move mountains for you. You're believing these things. It's an invisible God. You believe in that God's going to do something for you. But do you really have faith in the God that you believe in? Because if you did, you would love your neighbor. You would love your sister. You would love your brother. You would love your mother. You, you would love your father. Your mother that sent you out for adoption. The, mother, the one that didn't take care of you. The one that barely gave you anything to eat. The one that didn't have no shelter over your head. The one that had you living in a, in a shelter. The one that found you, cursing you, I said, you look like your father. I don't want to be bothered with you. Get out of my face. You talk, I'm, I'm talking about the, these people over here that is mad at their father because they didn't help raise them. Mad at their baby daddy. Mad at their, their ex-husband. Mad at their ex-wife. I'm talking to you. 
Those that feel like I'm on drugs because of my mom. I'm an alcoholic because of my situation. I'm the way I am because of this. I'm the way I am because of that person, that this person, that person. And you blame everybody for your situation. And you find yourself not speaking to your loved ones. But it's you. You have to love. If you say you love God, if you say you love Jesus Christ, if you are truly in love with the Lord and you say, I know that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, you have to love. You got to massage your heart. And ask God to show you love. What is love, Rashida? Somebody say that eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither have it entered into the heart of man. The things that God will, has prepared for those who love him. He's not preparing nothing for those that don't love him. But you can't receive anything if you don't love your neighbor. If you don't love your sister, your brother. You got to love. That was 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. So, love makes our actions and gifts useful. You might have a lot of, a, a lot of gifts. You might have a lot of talents. You know, I'm, I was always good with speaking. I was always good with being hyped. I was always, I was always good with galvanizing the crowd, getting people hyped. That was just me. It's, it, this is what I do is normal. This is, this is not, not an act. This is who I am. God used me with my talent that I already had. I was a loud cheerleader. I was always loud. I was hyped at the club. I did everything I wanted to do. Excited, right? That was me. But my love makes the difference in using it for the kingdom. It's my love that supersedes. It changes every talent. It changes your actions. It's your love. Everyone has different gifts. But the love that you have makes the difference. And love is available to everyone. You, Everybody has love because it says in the word... That whoever lives in love lives in God. You have love because God first loved you. So, I looked up what is love. I looked at all the words of love that's in the Bible. So, I'm going to take this time. It was four words, four types of love mentioned in the Bible in the Greek. However, I, I looked up all um, the words of love, which was eight. It was eight of them. But I'm going to te teach you the first four about the word, and then I'm going to teach you the last four, <clears throat> which is just natural love. And um, the first word was um, eros. Eros is romantic love. And the romantic love that we have, I want to read out a Song of Solomon. That love was romantic love. A lot of us just look at love as intimacy, you know, as you touching me, um, as you caressing me, the romantic love. <clears throat> and Song of Solomon which this book is so, I mean, when you read it, it's just like, it, it blows your mind because he really, really, really showed true love. And he's just like, oh my God, I wish somebody would love me like this. Um, Solomon, uh, <laughs> he was a mess. He had a lot of wives. He, was, he, he knew how to love. Let's go to Song of, so Song of Solomon or Song of Songs, chapter 1, verse 2. Song of Songs, chapter 1, verse 2. This is Eros love. It says, chapter 1, verse 2. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For your love is more delightful than wine. Let's go to chapter 8, verse 6 to 7. Still in Song of Songs. Chapter 8, verse 6 to 7. Who want the kisses to taste more better than wine? I know if you like to be intimate, you love to kiss first, right? That's what intimacy starts out with kissing. You get excited, like, oh my God, we had our first kiss. It says, verse 6, chapter 8, verse 6. Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is strong as death. My God. For love is strong as death. It's jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like blazing fire. Like a mighty flame. Many waters cannot quench love. Rivers cannot sweep it away. If one were to give all the wealth of one's house for love, it would be utterly scorned. Uh, who wants romantic love? 
Love that's stronger than death. You know, when you're just so in love, you don't even want to eat. You don't even want to go outside. Like, I just want you to be with me. I want you. That's Eros love. Let's go to uh, Ruth chapter 1, verse 14 to 18. This is storage love. This is love between family members. Storage is S-T-O-R-G-E. Eros is E-R-O-S. Love. That's the second love. Um... Ruth, let's go to Ruth chapter 1, verse 14 to 18. Now, Ruth, we know that Ruth loved her mother-in-law. She loved her dearly. And she was married to Ruth's son. I mean, she was married to Naomi's son. I'm sorry. And she loved her mother-in-law so much that she had stored J love. She says in Ruth chapter 1, verse 14 to 18, now, Ruth's husband died at this particular time, and she wanted to, Ruth wanted them to leave. I mean, Naomi wanted the, her two daughter-in-laws to leave and go back home with their parents. But Ruth said, I didn't want to go. I want to stay with you. She had storage of love. It says, where you go, let me start at verse 14. It says, at this, they wept aloud. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. Naomi, like, go back. I don't want to be bothered. Just go ahead back. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or turn to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Verse 17, where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. That is a love that you won't see often. People always find a way to not love their in-laws. They're like, oh, my mother-in-law, my in-laws, they get on my nerves. I'm good with me and my husband. We chilling. I got my own family. But that's the type of love that you need with your in-laws because you never know when you're going to need them. It's nothing like having in-laws that love you back and that you love. Naomi and Ruth showed that. Let's go to Esther. I want to show y'all Esther, her love between family members. Go to Esther chapter 3, verse 5. Now, Esther was an amazing story as well because Esther had a had a time with her cousin um Mordecai it was it was amazing because they were trying to kill her cousin Mordecai yo I can't find Esther here it is Esther chapter 3 verse 5 they were trying to kill her cousin Mordecai but she was in the king's palace she was the queen and her cousin like, you got to help me. Let's go to chapter three, verse five. Esther says, it says, when Haman saw that Mordecai would not kneel down or pay him honor, he was enraged. Yet having learned who Mordecai's people were, he scorned the idea of killing only Mordecai. Instead, Haman looked for a way to destroy all Mordecai's people, the Jews, throughout the whole kingdom of Xerxes. Xerxes. So, Mordecai and Esther were Jews. Haman found out that Mordecai was a Jew, and he said, you're not going to bow down to me, so guess what? I'm going to kill you. But Mordecai knew that his cousin was in the kingdom, and she was the queen, so he's like, I need to talk to my cousin, let her know what's going on. She had enough power to do what was necessary to get her cousin from not being killed. However, Mordecai was so distressed, he was so upset, this is what he done. Let's go to chapter 4, verse 1 to 5. When Mordecai, Esther chapter 4, verse 1 to 5, it says, When Mordecai learned of all that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out into the city, wailing loudly and bitterly. But he went only as far as the king's gate, because no one clothed in sackcloth was allowed to enter it. In every province to which the edict and order of the king came, there was great mourning among the Jews with fasting, weeping, and wailing. Many lay in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's eunuchs and female attendants came and told her about Mordecai, she was in great distress. She sent clothes for him to put on instead of his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther summoned 
Hathok, one of king's eunuchs assigned to her, assigned to attend her and ordered him to find out what was troubling Mordecai and why. So at this time, now um, Esther found out what was going on with her cousin. And she like, no, make sure that my cousin is cool. Well, the eunuchs told her what was wrong. And because of that, she like, no, y'all not going to kill my cousin or the Jews because I'm a Jew. She knew she was a Jew, but she never disclosed that information to the king. She never knew the king never knew that she was a Jew, but she had access. Somebody said she had access. She had access to the king. And because she had access to the king, she was willing to go to the king on her cousin and the Jews behalf. She had Sorge love. She went to him. Now, verse 12 and 16. Let's go down to chapter 4, verse 12 and 16. It says, when Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. He let her know, just as you got access in the kingdom, we all going to die, but you ain't, you ain't going to be the only one that's going to live. Everybody's dying. It says, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. You and your father's family will die. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Verse 15, then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go. Gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. She said, if I die, I die because I want to make sure that I had the sword J love for my family to make sure that none of us die. You will not die alone. I will make sure I do whatever I need to do because I'm in a position to make sure it will happen. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. Do you know that as a Christian man and woman of God, you are in position to make sure that your family is well, to make sure that your family is complete, to make sure that everyone that has problems in your family, you are the gateway to make sure that it's okay. You are the gateway to get it back in order. You are the one that can bring the family back to the table and say, what are we going to do? How can we make this happen? You can fast for your family. You have access. You have the spirit of God. You have to make the, make the first decision. You got to make the first step. It's your job because you have access to the king. You can go to the king and pray on your, on your family's behalf, on your husband's behalf, on your child's behalf, on your sister and brother's behalf. Those that don't like you, those that you think don't like you, those that's not speaking to you, you have access. Because you are in position, because you are a child of the king, you can go to your God and say, I need a favor. You can say, I need a favor. And because you have a favor by your father in heaven, you can loose and kill every demon that is attacking your family, that's attacking your loved ones, that's attacking your co-workers, whoever it is that you know you love. You can go to the king. She had the scepter. She had the scepter to give to the king to say, I need help. And the help is for me. You didn't even know who I was. But because of the favor that's on my life, I now live in the house. I'm the queen of the house and I can ask for whatever. You are the queen. You are the king and you have access. You have the, you, oh my God, you got it right in your mouth. You got it right in your heart. You have it. But we so afraid to go to God to ask because you like, you know what? I'm good. I'm done. I ain't fooling with my family. I ain't talking to them. I'm done with them. I don't want to be bothered. And guess what? You're losing time. You're losing time. You are losing time with God. You are losing the blessing that God has stored up for you. It says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man. Those that believe in God, he has things prepared for you. Those that love him. You have to love God. In order to love God, you got to love your loved ones. You got to love those that are attached to you, those that are related to you. Come on. We got to stop playing these games. You love the Lord so much, but you don't need to speak to your sister. Come on. 
know him. You don't love your cousin. You don't gotta love him. Just talk to him. Forgive him and go on. The next love is phileo love. Phileo love. That's spelled P H I L E O or P H I L I A. That's brotherly love or friendship love. That's a that's a love that we have. We have more love with our friends and with our our um our groups, our community. We have more love with our sororities. We have more love with our ministries. We have more love with our church family. But we didn't even have love with our own husband and wife and our kids right at home. Come on. We be running around making all these noises and sounds and clapping and oh my God, I can't wait to get there. Oh my God, I can't wait to be my girl. I can't wait to be with them. Oh my God, I can't wait to take some selfies. I can't wait to take our pictures. I can't wait to we do our clap. I can't wait to we do our dancing. And then you like barely want to go to Thanksgiving. But you waiting to see what your sorority or your sister circle is doing or your, your men's bow, men of valor programs is doing so you can be with them. Huh? And you say you love the Lord? You say you love the Lord? Really? No, we got the time out for that. Time out. You have the brotherly love that we have, the friendship that we have, is deep emotional bonds that connects two people. And a lot of us have our best friend, our sister, our girl, our bull. You know, we go drink with our friends. We go smoke hookah with our friends. You know, we laughing with our friends. We sitting on the porch with our friends. And that's called phileo love. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 20. Now, it's verse, verses 1 to 42. I'm going to read all of it. I'm going to read it all of it. You know why? Because I want to show you how much somebody can love their brother more than their own loved one. This story is about David and Jonathan. 1 Samuel chapter 20, verses 1 to 42. I'm not going to elaborate on it. I'm going to just read it because y'all know me. I keep starting and stopping. Chapter 20, verse 1 to 42. Now, David and Jonathan were close friends. And David knew that Saul was trying to kill him, which was Jonathan's father. But Jonathan and David were close friends. They had phileo love. Listen to this. Just listen to the story. First Samuel chapter 20, verse 1. It says, Then David fled from Naoth, at Ramah and went to Jonathan and asked, what have I done? What is my crime? How have I wronged your father that he is trying to kill me? He's talking about Saul. Never, Jonathan replied, you are not going to die. Look, my father doesn't do anything great or small without letting me know. Why would he hide this from me? Isn't it so? But David took an oath and said, your father knows very well that I have found favor in your eyes. And he has said to himself, Jonathan must not know this or he will be grieved. Yet as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, there is only a step between me and death. Jonathan said to David, what, whatever you want me to do, I'll do for you. Now he's siding against his father. Oh my God, I said I wasn't going to explain. So David said, look, tomorrow is the new moon feast and I am supposed to dine with the king. But let me go and hide in the field until the evening of the day after tomorrow. If your father misses me at all, tell him David earnestly asked my permission to hurry to Bethlehem, his hometown. Because an annual sacrifice is being made there for his whole clan. If he says, very well, then your servant is safe. But if he loses his temper, you can be sure that he is determined to harm me. As for you, show kindness to your servant, for you have brought him into a covenant with you before the Lord. If I am guilty, then kill me yourself. Why hand me over to your father? Verse 9. Never, Jonathan said, if I had the least inkling that my father was determined to harm you, wouldn't I tell you? David asked, who will tell me if your father answers you harshly? 
Come, Jonathan said. Let's go out into the field. So they went there together. Then Jonathan said to David, I swear by the Lord, the God of Israel, that I will surely sound out my father by this time, the day after tomorrow. If he is favorably disposed towards you, will I not send you word and let you know? But if my father intends to harm you, may the Lord deal with Jonathan. Be it ever so severely. If I do not let you know, send you away in peace. May the Lord be with you as you as with you as he has been with my father. Verse 14. But show me unfailing kindness that the Lord kindness as long as I live so that I may not be killed and do not ever cut off your kindness from my family. Not even when the Lord has cut off every one of David's enemies from the face of the earth. Verse 16. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David saying, may the Lord God call David's enemies to account. And Jonathan had David reaffirm his oath out of love for him, phileo love, because he loved him as he loved himself. Then Jonathan said to David, tomorrow is a new moon feast. Will you will be missed because your seat will be empty. The day after tomorrow towards evening, go to the place where you hid when this trouble began and wait by the stone Eziel. I will shoot three arrows to the side of it as though I were shooting at a target. Then I will send a boy and say, go find the arrows. If I say to him, look, the arrows are on the side of you. Bring them here. Then come because as surely as the Lord lives, you are safe. There is no danger. But if I say to the boy, look, the arrows are beyond you. Then you must go because the Lord has sent you away. And about the matter you and I discussed, remember, the Lord is witness between you and me forever. So David hid in the field. And when the new moon feast came, the king sat down to eat. He sat in his customary place by the wall, opposite Jonathan and Abner, sat next to Saul. But David's place was empty. Saul said nothing that day, for he thought something must have happened to David to make him ceremonially unclean. Surely he is unclean. But the next day, the second day of the month, David's place was empty again. Then Saul said to his son, Jonathan, why hasn't the son of Jesse come to the meal? Either yesterday or today. Jonathan answered, David earnestly asked me for permission to go to Bethlehem. He said, let me go because our family is observing a sacrifice in the town and my brother has ordered me to be there. If I have found favor in your eyes, let me get away to see my brothers. That is why he has not come to the king's table. Verse 30, Saul's anger flared up at Jonathan and he said to him, you son of a perverse and rebellious woman, don't I know that you have sided with the son of Jesse to your son own shame and to the shame of your mother who bore you? As long as the son of Jesse lives on this earth, neither you nor your kingdom will be established. Now send someone to bring him to me for he must die. Why should you, why should he be put to death? What has he done? Jonathan asked his father, but Saul hurled his spear at him to kill him. Then Jonathan knew that his father intended to kill David. Jonathan got up from the table in fierce anger. On that second day of the feast, he did not eat because he was grieved at his father's shameful treatment of David. In the morning, Jonathan went out to the field for his meeting was with David. He had a small boy with him and he said to the boy, run and find the arrows I shoot. As the boy ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. When the boy came to the place where Jonathan's arrow had fallen, Jonathan called out after him. Is it the arrow beyond you? Then he shouted, hurry, go quickly. Don't stop. The boy picked up the arrow and returned to the master. The boy knew nothing about all this. Only Jonathan and David knew. Then Jonathan gave his weapon to the boy and said, go, carry them back to town. Verse 41, after the boy had gone, David got up from the south side of the stone and bowed down before Jonathan three times with his face to the ground. Then they kissed each other and wept together. But David wept the most. 
Jonathan said to David, go in peace. For we have sworn friendship, phileo friendship with each other in the name of the Lord saying, the Lord is witness between you and me and between your descendants and my descendants forever. Then David left and Jonathan went back to the town. That is phileo love. That's the kind of love that we have to have with our friends. That is the kind of love that you will help your friend not die out of the hands of your own father. He stopped the hands of his father killing his own friend. Are you willing to help your friend if you know your loved ones hate them? Are you willing to stop the hand of the enemy when you know that you're, somebody's talking about your friend? Will you talk with about your friend with them? Will you let them speak heavily about your friend? Will you let them talk down about your loved one? Will you let them speak all against your loved one? A lot of us let people hate our loved ones, hate our cousins, hate our sisters, hate our brothers. And you sit there and let them. You don't even go between them. You don't even try to find a way to stop them. You let them do that. And you say you love God. How can you not have phileo love? You let your friends hate your husband. You talk about your husband to your friends and you let them hate him. You let them hate your sister. You let them hate your brother. You let them hate your cousin because you hate him. And you have phileo love. Come on. What are we doing? And we say we love God. We got to be careful. Even Jonathan was willing to stop the hand of his father by killing David. He made a truce with his own friend so his friend won't die. He could have got killed by his father when the father threw the knife at him. Let's go on. Agape love. That's fatherly love. That's unconditional love. That love is the highest form of love that God has for us. That is agape love. Do you have agape love like the fatherly love? It's what Jesus demonstrated on the cross for us by sacrificing his life and taking on the entire burden of sin for all mankind so that we could have life everlasting with him in heaven. Agape love. What is agape? Let me, let's find agape love in the Bible. Let's go to John chapter 3, verse 16. Now we read John chapter 3 like two weeks ago about Nicodemus, right? So we know that when this story was, when this um, book was written, it was written by the author, John the Apostle. And after Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, this was spoken directly after Jesus spoke to Nicodemus. It says, for God so loved the world, the love that's spoken here is agape love, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have ever have eternal life. So I'm not going to elaborate on agape love because we already know what John 3, 16, we didn't already study that before. So agape love is having unconditional love. Do you have unconditional love for your loved ones, for your sister, for your brother? Do you have unconditional love, the fatherly love that you will give of yourself? Are you willing to give of yourself for someone else? Or are you selfish? Are you worried about yourself and what you need? Well, we have four more types of love. These are not loves that are um, in the word. These are other, other loves that I um, looked up that I wanted you to understand the other type of love that we also um, have. is pragma love. That's P-R-A-G-M-A. -A. I'm going I'm to um, spell all the other loves as well. It's um, Euros love is E-R-O-S. E-R-O-S. Storge love is S-T-O-R-G-E. Phileo love is P-H-I-L-I-A. Um, Agape love is A-G-A-P-E. And Pragma love is P-R-A-G-M-A. Now, this love is a unique bonded love that matures over many years. This is an everlasting love between a couple that chooses to put equal effort into their relationship with commitment and dedication. That's pragma love. That is love that lasts long. When you see couples holding hands and they like 75, 80 at the, at the Red Lobster restaurant, you're like, oh my God, they've been together for a long time. That's pragma love. That's love between a couple that chooses to put equal effort into their relationship. 
You got to choose, Rashida, to put equal effort into the relationship so that you can have pragma love. Then it's also ludus love. That's L-U-D-U-S. Ludus love is love that's when you're flirting and be the beginning stages of intimate love, that giddy emotional love. That's the love that you have when you first meet somebody. You get so excited. That's called ludus love. And it's funny, but that's the love that you want to feel all the time. You get so excited when you meet somebody. You know, people that um, do online dating, they have ludus love. They get so excited every time they meet somebody new. They get that flirty feeling like, oh, my God, I'm about to go have another date. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what I look like. I can't wait to see what they look like. That's ludus love. That's that giddy feeling. That's when you got them butterflies in your stomach. And you have that, um, that uh, what is it called, a, a blind date. You have that love. Um, um, mania, mania love is M-A-N-I-A. -A. That's obsessive love. That's madness over a love partner, jealousy, possessiveness. Some people have mania love. That's love. That's the crazy love that you, that the two people so crazy love, they've been to kill each other. Because they love each other so much that they can't even look at somebody at the restaurant. They can't look at somebody when they out at a comedy show. Like, what you looking at him for? Before you know it, they're fighting, they're arguing. That's obsessive love. You can't go nowhere. You can't do anything. That's crazy love. You know, Beyonce said she's crazy in love with Jay-Z, right? And she said, ring the alarm. She was crazy. She's crazy in love. Then we also have fellatio love. That's P-H-I-L-A-U-T-I-A. It's a healthy form of love where you recognize your self-worth and don't ignore your personal needs. Now, this is a love that we all need to have. We need to have fellatio love. It's, it's, it, it's not, it don't um, pronounce the way it's spelled. I had to look it up because I'm like, this word don't sound right. But this is a healthy form of love where you recognize your own self-worth and don't ignore your own personal needs. You got to recognize your responsibility for your well-being. It's when your soul allows you to reflect on your necessary needs and your physical and emotional and mental health. That type of love, when you love yourself, you got to love yourself. When you love yourself, you can love your neighbor. You can love your family. You can love your children. You can love your husband. You can love your wife. You can love you and you can love in your relationship. You can be willing to open your heart. That is that kind of love. You have to have self-love. Not just getting your nails and your hair done. You have to look within and say, I love myself. I don't need a man or a woman to make me happy. I don't need things to make me happy. I don't need money to make me happy. I love me. And you will be complete in you. And when you are complete with yourself, you can be complete with God. You can be complete enough to forgive your loved one. You can be complete enough to forgive those that hurt you. You can go and say, you know, I love myself enough that I don't have to be angry no more. I don't want to be angry. I don't want to hold a grudge. Because holding a grudge, my sister said to me yesterday, she said, holding a grudge, she is like drinking poison. You drinking the poison and hoping that the other person dies. That thing resonated with me. That thing helped me because I'm like, you drink the poison, but you want the other person to die. You're dying inside, but you so mad that you want the other person to die. That's what holding a grudge is. That's what not having self-love. When you love yourself enough, you won't drink the poison. You will make sure that you drink in love, that you making sure that you're helping someone. You're making sure that you're talking to that person. You're letting them know you're, you hurt me. I, it didn't feel good when you said what you said to me. It didn't feel good what you done to me. You got to be honest and let them know. You are abusing me. It don't feel good the way you put your hands on me. It don't feel good what you said to me. It don't feel good how you talk to me. The way you always um self-sabotaging. You sabotage yourself. You got to stop self-sabotaging. You have to look in the mirror and say, I love Rashida. I love me. I love Donna. I love Bernice. I love Michelle. I love Charles. You got to say that. You got to say to yourself, I love me. And when you love yourself enough, when you read the word of God, the word will become life. It will become true. You can't, you can't um, receive the word of the Bible because you hate yourself. And you put that stuff on other people. You mad at the world. Every time somebody say something, you got something negative to say. Every time somebody try to give you a compliment, you like, they say, you look nice today. You're like, oh yeah, well I tried. No, I know I look good. Thank you. I appreciate that because I like myself when I walked out the house this morning. And your like 
is extra. But you got to like yourself enough to be able to say that. A lot of us don't like ourselves. We so busy comparing ourselves to other people. And then you hate your own loved ones because they're confident. But you got to love yourself enough to be able to say, if I love myself, I can love myself enough to forgive them. Because I know that they love me. They made a mistake. They're not perfect. And nobody's perfect. So we have to learn that. Let me finish real quick. I got to get done. Oh my God, I got two minutes. Oh. I'm going to finish my notes. It says, Jesus is the complete expression of God in human form. And God has revealed himself when we love ourselves. When we love ourselves, God is showing that he has revealed himself in us. When you are exuding with beauty, when you're exuding with the spirit of God, when people walk with you and they around you, they're like, oh, you, you seem different. That's love superseding outside of you. That's love out of the nostrils of God. People can feel that love on you. We have to love one another because that invincible God reveals himself in you. That's what the Holy Spirit is inside of you. It's an invincible God that resonates inside of you to other people. When you cursing people out, when every time somebody say something, you getting smart. When people know you're not talking to your cousins and your loved ones, that is not exuding love. That is not transcending love over the people. That is hatred. People see hatred on you. You have to be willing. Oh my God. I don't have enough time. You have to be willing to show the love of Christ, the love of God. And the woman of God that was in my chair yesterday, two women that was in my chair, one lady that was doing her hair early in the morning at 7 o'clock, and another lady that was doing her hair at 11 o'clock, and they both was asking me about relationships that I'm in, that relationship that I'm in, and they both spoke about, do you love? Like, do you really love? And I'm like, yeah, but, it's like, there ain't no but. How can you say you love God, but you're not willing to forgive? You're not willing to truly love. You got to be willing to truly show the love of God, the invincible God that you say you love. He's invincible, y'all. We believe in who Jesus Christ is. We believe in about the Holy Spirit. We believe in about God. However, you can't show that you believe him unless your heart shows it. Your heart posture got to show it. It's how you show up. It's how you talk. It's how you walk. It's how you uh, um, enter a room. It's how you come. How is your attitude? Help me, Holy Ghost. Rashida, how do you really act when nobody's around? How do you really respond when nobody's listening? Come on. John chapter 20, verse 29. You cannot say you love God and you have never seen him, but you see your loved one and you hate them. You must reconcile. You must resolve the issues or conflict while you still have time. Somebody say, I don't have a lot of time. Why? Because people are dying. And guess what? People die and they be so bitter for the rest of their life because they didn't get the chance to tell their mother how she treated them. They didn't get the chance to tell their father how he hurt them. They didn't get the chance to tell their child what they done to them. They didn't get the chance to tell the person that, you know, gave them peer pressure to help them be on abuse, um, that been abusive to them. Those things are true. You don't want to hold on to that for unforgiveness. Because you didn't tell them that they hurt you. You don't have a lot of time. People are dying. You don't want to walk around bitter for the rest of your life. You have to solve the conflict while you still have time. Mend the broken areas. Restore the broken relationships. Because you can't have inexpressible and glorious joy over something you are believing. But you can't rectify a broken relationship with your loved one. Oh my God, teach me Lord. Inexpressible. What is inexpressible? The Bible says in 1 Peter. Let's go back to 1 Peter real quick. We almost done, y'all. 1 Peter chapter 1. It says, verse 8. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And you, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith and the salvation of your, your souls. Inexpressible joy is indescribable joy. It's too strong to describe. That's how much joy you have when you say you love God. You get so excited. You get so pumped. Oh my God, I'm going to church. I love the Lord. He loves me. He knows my heart. Oh my God, I'm just so blessed. 
God is pouring out blessings on me, but you hate your sister. You can't have inexpressible joy when you don't love. It says, when you truly forgive and come to yourself, the joy that will raise up in you, you will be profound. It will be unspeakable and overwhelming joy. You know, Timothy, he got so excited with express, inexpressible joy after he seen the holes in Jesus' hand. It wasn't until he seen it. But God said, bless those that don't see, but still believe. Come on. He said, bless those that don't see, but still believe in me. Thank God that we believe in Jesus Christ and we don't see. We're just believing that he's going to resurrect us. We believe in that he's going to restore us. We're believing that he's going to show us mighty works. We believe in that he's going to um, honor us. We believe in that he's going to um, make our families that are broken straight. We're believing that he's going to restore our relationships. We're believing that. And we don't even get the chance to see him. Let's go to John chapter 20 verse 9. Real quick. John chapter 20 verse 9. Verse 29. I'm sorry. John chapter 20 verse 29. This is Timothy. Tom, I said Timothy. Thomas. Jesus Christ. Thomas. It says Thomas said to um, him. Um, let's start off. Let, let me go back to 27. I'm sorry. 26. A week later, his disciples were in his house again. And Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Verse 27. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put, your, put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Verse 28, Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. He had inexpressible joy. He said, my Lord and my God. He got so excited once he seen, once he seen it. However, God said, blessed are those who don't see. The chapter Donna was John chapter 20 verses 26 to 29. I'm sorry. You got to get excited because you believe and have not seen. We are believing that Jesus Christ is faithful. We are believing that Jesus Christ is our Lord. We're believing that he died on the cross for our sins. We're believing that the blood shed covers a multitude of sins. We are believing. And because we believe, we are going to be blessed. But you have to learn to love. Oh, y'all got to share this loud today because somebody... It's not believing. Somebody waiting to believe God. Somebody's waiting, but they got to believe just because of who he is. So press your way to pick up the phone. I'm talking to you. Press your way to pick up the phone. Press your way to pick up the phone, Keisha. Press your way to pick up the phone, Leonette. Press your way to pick up the phone, Lynette. Press your way to pick up the phone, Michelle. Press your way to pick up the phone. Ring the doorbell. Go to somebody's house and meet you. Write the, write the letter, write the email, start texting, start texting Rashida. Don't leave this day hollering about you love Jesus Christ. I love the Lord with all my heart and all my soul, but you know, you have a loved one that you hate, that you can't stand, that you're not talking to all from a small disagreement, but you want love. You got to pick up the phone. You got to knock on that door. You got to humble yourself. You got to be willing to say, I'm sorry. I messed up. I'm not perfect. What can I do to rectify this thing? Peter repeated to the believers. Now this, now what we just read in John chapter 20 verse 29 is exactly what Peter just said to the believers in um, 1 Peter. He repeated what, what happened in John. He said to them, you believe and you have not seen. Bless you. And a blessing because you are standing still in faith of belief and you're still getting persecuted. They were still getting persecuted even though they believed and they was not there when Jesus Christ died on the cross. They learned about Christ later, but they still believed even while they were becoming martyrs, even while they were dying because they loved the Lord. But all you have is faith. It says that we had to stand on faith. You believe because of your faith. All you have is faith that will carry you. This is our last scripture. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. This is our last scripture, y'all. 1 
First Timothy chapter four, verse 10. Real quick, real quick. It says, first Timothy chapter four, verse 10. That is why we labor and strive because we have put our hope in the living God who is the savior of all people and especially of those who believe. We labor and strive in this thing. We're laboring. We're serving. You have to keep serving. We have to keep serving even though you can't see him, even though you can't touch him, even though he's not tangible, even though we're not walking with him. You have to continue to serve him even though you can't see him, even though you can't trace him. You still must trust him. Even though it hurts, you still have to sing hallelujah. Even though it don't feel good, even when they just slander your name, still continue to raise your hand in the sanctuary. Continue to clap your hands. Continue to pray. Continue to fast. Even when they're not faithful, continue to look to the hills which come with your help. Because your help come from the Lord. Miss Millicent, I'm talking to you. Even though... Come on, Angela. Even though they hurt you, even though you got so much to say, get it out. Get it off your heart. Make sure that they know how you feel so that you can love truly, so God can truly love you. It's your faith that's being displayed in the word. It's your faith that's being displayed. Just don't listen today. Let it resonate in your heart. Let it resonate in your heart, please. For those that don't know, he's our everything. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's Elohim. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's faithful. He's amazing. He is loving. He is kind. He is forgiving. He is a God that will always see about you. He is a help in the time of storm. Whatever you need from him, I'm telling you today, you can have it. But I'm telling you to massage your heart. Massage your heart. So that when you turn around tomorrow, God can bless you because you took the time to pick up the phone. You took the time to write the email. You took the time to text. You took the time to forgive. You took the time to say, God, show me where I'm lacking. Show me where my love is weak. Show me where I need to get better at. This word bless my life today. Somebody say, give me a clean heart. Renewing me a right spirit. Create. Somebody say, create in me a clean heart. Don't just give it to me, create it. Because it takes a lot to create something. It takes a moment. But I'm telling you to get started today. I don't know who this word is for, but I'm telling you, share this live. Let somebody know that love supersedes all. God bless you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I bless your holy and righteous name. Father, we thank you so much for love. Father, we thank you so much for the eight loves that we found out about today. Father, I thank you, God. Father, I ask you today to just continue to have that agape love for us. Help us to have agape love. Help us to have that unconditional love. God, help us to be better in our walk with you. Help us to be better with our, our family, our friends, our loved ones, our coworkers, our neighbors. Father, help us to show who you are. You are an invincible God, but you resonate through us. Father, let, uh, let the world see that we are carrying your glory. Father, let them see that you are in us. Father, let them know that you have saturated us with your blood. Father, let them see. That we are made brand new because of you. Father, we need you today like never before. Loose, heal, deliver, save, and set free today. Father, we need you because our hearts are hard. A lot of us are angry. A lot of us don't want to be bothered with our loved ones, with our sisters, our brothers, our cousins, our nieces, our father, our mother. Because they have hurt us. But Father, I ask you today to remove the stone from our hearts so that we can receive your glory. So that we can receive what you have prepared for us. Father, I want all that you have stored up for me. So, Father, cut my, my heart open and do surgery on it, God. Right now, today. Father, I thank you. I love you and I honor you. We look forward to your glory. Father, we thank you. There is somebody on this live today that feel like, you know, I love the Lord. I've been a believer all my life. I know that God is my father, but I didn't have love. I didn't know that I didn't have love. You can rededicate yourself today. You can give yourself back to Christ today. 
just by confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that you know that now Jesus is love and believe it in your heart that God loves you and you will be truly saved. I know we say we say because we go to church, but saving is through love. So today, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you just so happen to scroll by this live and I'm on here. You can receive our father today. You don't have to do no cartwheels, no flips. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is repeat after me. You have to say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. And I believe you came to earth. And I believe you died on the cross for me. And I believe you shed your blood for me. And I believe you rose from the dead. Right now, I come to you, Lord Jesus, because I am a sinner. Forgive my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. Make me clean. And I will be clean. Come into my heart. Save my soul. I no longer belong to Satan. I belong to you. I am forever yours. And I am now saved. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. God bless y'all. I want y'all to know real quick that we raised $712 for our giveaway on next Saturday. We have so many donations with our food donations. I'm going to take the money and go buy the rest of the food that we need. And also, um, I'm going to make sure that we have enough food to give away with the hot meals on next Saturday. I will not be available next Sunday on live. I'm going away. I have to go to a conference. However, those that are available to um, go and serve at the um, turkey giveaway at Chester Fine Arts Center next Saturday, I will send out the flyer tomorrow so that you can be there. Please go and represent as yes, I will not be there. I have a um, conference I have to be at. However, I need a couple people just to go represent for us because of all the love and dedication that you have, all the serving that you have done. I really would appreciate if you will be there. To help serve, only you just gotta serve for a little bit. The um, Omega Sci Fi Epsilon chapter, they will be there in full effect. They always have a lot of people, but I definitely want to make sure that you guys are there. So if you still want to give an offering, you can. You can still send your offering to SGS Ministry. Um, I'm sorry, to PayPal.me slash SGS Ministry or um to Cash App Dollar Sign Reverend Rashida Lee R E V R A S H E E D A H L E E. And um, it will be used for the giveaway, for the turkeys and everything. I'm just so excited, y'all, because God is really showing us love. You um, exhibit love when you serve. When you serve, you give back to God's people. When you clothe the neck and you're giving back to God. When you're making sure that you are helping the homeless, you're giving back to God. When you're helping the hungry, you're giving back to God. So I thank all of y'all for y'all donations. I thank y'all so much for y'all time that y'all serve. I thank y'all so much for being attentive on this live, for sharing this live. And if you're on here and you don't get our daily updates, I, I sent out a weekly update. I would like for you to text SGS to the number 474747 and you will finally get updates. That is SGS. I'm going to put it in the chat. It's SGS to the number 474747. And you can also go to my YouTube page. If your loved ones are not on Facebook, tell them to go to my YouTube page under Reverend Rashida Lee for youtube and you can watch the, the word any time of the day on your tv so and if you are not on youtube go and subscribe to my channel i would really love that you'll subscribe to my channel because guess what then i will be able to go live from youtube and then we'll be international we'll be worldwide y'all so i'm excited i love y'all god bless y'all make sure y'all go to church today and also if you have did the 90 day challenge with us today today is the last day for the 90 day challenge we're going to meet at the hair salon at 2 o'clock just to share our testimony. If you didn't do the um, 90 Day Challenge, still come by. Come on and say hi to me. Come on and give me a hug. Come on and just share your testimony about how God has blessed you in the last 90 days. So I love y'all. I God bless y'all. And I hope that you are able to massage your hearts today. That if you had an ought with your brethren, if you had an ought with your sister, make sure that you clear it up today. Because you want God to love you with his whole heart. God bless you. I love y'all. Share this live. Share it because somebody needs it.